Hi, everybody. Welcome to the UEA Nursing Podcast. My name is Joe Ellis Gage, and today we have another Meet the Lecturer episode. Um, and today we're with Michaela. Hi, Michaela. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Um, You're welcome. I know you said uh, this is not your uh, favourite place to be in front of the camera. Definitely not. Um, but you'll forget the cameras are rolling in a minute and it'll all be fine. Um, so we have a chat, basically. We find out a bit about you. So students who are currently being taught by you, prospective students who are thinking about coming to university, and those who will be starting early in um sort of in their september and they're ready to come and they're kind of go right i want to find out about our lecturers they can watch this get a little snapshot and find out a bit about us so really quickly just tell us who you are and what your your role is here at the university okay brilliant so yep my name is michaela warren and i am a children and young people's nursing lecturer here at the university um i am also the admissions lead for the children and young people's nursing program and an advisor lead for the children and young people's program so as part of the admissions lead i deal with um, admissions marketing and recruitment and i think that my advisor lead role really works well with the admissions lead because yeah. when students come to the university as lead advisor i take that overseeing role of advisors on the program and how to support students transition them across the year groups and also into further employability okay cool so students will get to know you really early on because they'll probably have some contact with you in the admissions and ad yes. interview process then when they start they'll meet you as an advisor and yep. you as lead advisor and you then teach in the first year primarily on the bsc as well yes so there's no escaping you in the first year basically they everyone gets to know not. who you are <laughs> yes good okay cool um so how did you become a nurse what, what got you into it in the first place um so nursing I always wanted to be a carer of some sort. Um, I was always told by my parents that I was like sensible, caring, empathetic. So from a young age, I can remember pictures of me dressing up in my nursing costume okay. and things like that. Um, nursing isn't a profession that runs in the family. So my mum was military background, my dad was police. So I'm quite sergeant major in my approach. Yeah. Um, and it was, I was always, I suppose that shy child that wore glasses, that had a hearing impairment, that wasn't very confident. So nursing, although I knew that I wanted to be going to caring, nursing was never on the forefront of my mind. Um, probably at the age of the 14, I then developed a little bit of confidence and my parents encouraged me to go out and work. So I worked a bit in hospitality and in a restaurant okay. and I become a children's entertainer um, <laughs> for a restaurant. So did like plate spinning, Diablo, balloon modelling and things like that for children's parties. And it was during then that I liked the engagement with children and young people. So I went on to do child development as part of my GCSEs. Yeah. Um, but I had a huge fear of vomiting and I had a huge fear of seeing adults unwell. Um, and adult vomit is really chunky. Mm -hmm. um, adults unwell just reminded me of caring for my parents. Um, what with working with children in the hospitality section and in the hospitality sector and being a children's entertainment, I thought, oh, maybe I do want to become into caring. I don't want to go into teaching. Maybe instead of caring for adults, I could care for children and young people. Yeah. So I think that that kind of inspired me to pursue the role. Yeah, so it did. wasn't like always something you had your eyes set on, but mm. you knew it was that sort of area. Yeah, And you yeah. went from nervous and a bit shy, children's entertainer, nurse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I always, I'm quite self-conscious. So I always, I'm one of these people that has to try really, really hard to get somewhere in life. Mm -hmm. um, and we quite often have students that turn around and say, you know, I'm not an academic, I'm more hands-on and I learn through, you know, doing skills yeah. and simulation. And I can completely relate to that because I would try and try and try. And if you compared me to my brother, for example, who's a lawyer, he doesn't have to try very hard yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. He, um, you know, he'll get top marks from not doing anything. Whereas myself, I would have to try really, really hard and even still I wouldn't achieve those top marks so I think I learn far more through doing yeah rather than sitting down and reading a paper and applying that knowledge yeah and, and that's not necessarily that you know you, I, often people will say oh well so and so is much cleverer than I am yeah. um actually it's more that you're clever in a different way so you just learn in a different way yes and yeah. nursing is interesting because we get an incredibly big range of people that come on to nursing courses from people who are academic kind of high flyers yep. who can find that side of things really easy to those people who've worked really hard just to get on the course 
who are really great nurses, but may struggle with some of the academic side of things. And yes. that's okay as well. Yeah, 100%. Um, so that's probably quite reassuring for people to see this because I think often lecturers or, you know, academics are a bit intimidating maybe because it Hugely. feels like everyone should be really, really clever. Um, you, are you trying to tell me that I'm not clever, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there you go. See, look. Well, I, I do the same thing. I, I, I'm not, I don't think find myself being kind of naturally like really academic. Yes. And when we teach a lot in the first year, I often say to the students over and over again, I'm not going to teach you anything complicated. I'm going to teach you some stuff in a really simple way because it, that's how I learn. Yes. And actually you want to learn some basics really well and you don't need to be that complicated. Yes, um, definitely. It's not that saying it's easy, but you've got to present it in a certain way that works for everybody and everyone finds their own kind of way of learning and how they take on information better. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Um, and then where did you do your training? I did my training in the University of Hertfordshire. Okay. So, yeah, I grew up in Hertfordshire. Um, and again, I say that when I started part-time work and I come out of my shell a little bit, um, I always knew that I wanted to stay local to home. Yeah. So I did move out of home and I stayed in accommodation when I did my nurse training, but I was always local. So my parents were still on my doorstep and my friends were close mm. by and things like that. Um, but yeah, I studied, I studied, I was quite young. I was just 18 when I went into my nursing training as well. So I didn't take a break from my A-levels yeah. or anything. I went straight in from finishing my A-levels to going to university because I always worried that if I took that break after doing my A-levels, whether I'd change my mind or whether I'd actually go to university. So I thought, you yeah, know yeah. what, I'm going to just continue. Okay. Um, and how was it? Was it like a steep learning curve when you got to university? Did you enjoy it? Did you... So obviously the curriculum when I done my nursing training is very much different to the curriculum now. And I liked my nursing training because there wasn't just the focus on children and young people's nursing. Mm. There was a, a significant element on children and young people's nursing, but I got the opportunity to experience adult nursing yeah. and mental health nursing as well. So I went on different placements, certainly across my first year. So that kind of cemented to me that I'd made the right decision for me in caring for children and young people's nursing. Um, during my nursing training, um, because of the university that I went to, my um, placements were based in one trust. Um, so I had experience on children's wards, neonatal intensive care and accident yeah. emergency, but it was very much based in one, one trust. area. Yeah. And actually when I did my nursing training as well, it was a, a thing back then that the, um, a lot of the nurses encouraged you to do go on to a general children's area when you qualified as opposed to the diverse opportunities that are available for children and young people's nurses yeah so um i typically followed that pathway so when i finished my nursing training i then went and worked on a children and young people's ward yeah um and then went on to have a family so the one thing that i i don't necessarily regret about my children and young people's nursing journey but when you go in to become a children and young people's nurse, when you're offered the placements and you understand the diversity of where children and young people's nurses can work, you set yourself a trajectory of your yeah. career pathway. And I always said to myself that I wanted to go into paediatric intensive care or I wanted to go into education. Um, and I never went into paediatric intensive care because my family life took priority. Mm. Um, so then I pursued my career into education um, yeah, because I, I, if I went into paediatric intensive care, I wanted to become one of those retrieval nurses. I liked yeah, the yeah. Um, caring for significantly sick children or I liked the adrenaline that you'd get from caring for that acutely unwell child. But I still got those opportunities, but within the acute setting yeah. in the A&E department or on the acute ward as opposed to, you know, that transportation of that patient from one hospital to another. Yeah, OK. Um, and so so you did your training, went did the traditional thing as it was kind of expected of you to go and work on a general ward which is what a lot of people will do still even now um which is fine um how long sort of did you stay there for did you because you had this sort of this nag of wanting to do have done something different did you think about going anywhere else what was your kind of pathway like at that point yeah so when i stayed there i think i was there for about 10 years yeah um and i worked in different areas so i worked in the children's ward i worked in um children's assessment unit i worked in an a and e so when i very first started working in a and e it was an adult a and e initially yeah. and then become a children and young persons accident and emergency um while i was there also i got the opportunity to do a secondment to a children's special needs school for children with neurological impairment oh, okay. and physiological physical impairment and that was almost 
that was a real big highlight of my career in Hertfordshire because mm. it actually there was so much that I took away from that experience in working with that school in that normal environment for that child and their family and um, supporting them, providing that family centre care and holistic care within an environment that's normal for them because when we bring children into the hospital, they're quite often frightened, scared. It's not a normal environment for them. So I found that opportunity really, really rewarding. And then after that, I went on and done my specialist nurses course for um, pediatric oncology care. Oh, okay. Um, so I did that and then I focused, I still worked on the children and young people's ward, but my focus was around caring for children with cancer, um, of which I thoroughly enjoyed. I think the only thing that I struggled with then was that because I had so much contact with children that had cancer, whether it was because they c were coming in for blood transfusions or whether it was because they were febrile neutropenic or have mucositis, some of the complexities of cancer mm. treatment, it almost become mundane. Like yeah. everything that I was doing was around children with cancer and these children are really, really sick. But like it, yeah. was, like it almost felt that it was just part of my life. And one of the things that I really struggled with as well was I worked every other day. So I worked Tuesday, Thursday, and then a day at the weekend. So I always felt like I was almost at work and there was never a significant break time yeah. from being at work. Um, we had a young family um, and I always knew having had family that lived in Norfolk that I would never stay in Hertfordshire to bring up my children as they started to get older. I knew, I always knew that I wanted to be close to the seaside. I always knew that I wanted to be closer to my grandparents. So yeah. then, yeah, so, so then after 10 North years, Pem we jumped ship and moved away from my family and come to Norfolk. There you go. Yeah. So that's, that's big, a big, big leap, but one you'd obviously, you know, done for a particular reason yeah. and it all turned out to do for the right or to work, I suppose, in the end. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and you came and worked up here in a sort of general children's ward sort of setting again. Yep. Um, and then how did you get across to the university? So sort of how did you go from general ward back up in Norfolk or in you know to come to work here? Yeah, so I like I said at the beginning of my trajectory when I entered my career, it was like paediatric intensive care or it was like education. I was really inspired by the people that taught me children and young people's nursing. Yeah. I can remember my lecturers. I remember in particular this one lecturer who supported me during my dissertation and the amount of support that I got, their knowledge, the way that they cared for us during our training, our interactions with them. So education was something that was always an interest to me, whether that would be practice education or in higher education in university. But because I only had my degree behind me, I never thought that going into yeah. higher education was something that I was able to do. Um, <clears throat> I liked supporting students on the ward when yep. I was working with them, um, whatever capacity that was in, whether I was teaching them a new skill or supporting them with their learning. And I worked through COVID. And during the COVID time, I worked in adult areas as well. So mm -hmm. I was on adult intensive care or adult high dependency. Yep. Um, because in that time, we used our transferable skills. And students were pulled from the practice environment just because of their own safety and the demands on us as registered nurses to yeah. care for really sick patients. And I kind of missed that connection with students. Um, so I thought, you know, what way can I rekindle that connection, that passion that I have for driving education of the future and teaching children and young people in nursing? So, yeah, I just applied for a job at the university and here you are. Here I am. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. And what is it you kind of like most about working here? I think for me, I like the team that I work for. Um, I think I'm incredibly lucky to work with a really, really supportive team. Uh, I like the program that we deliver and the variety mm -hmm. that we offer on the program. I like supporting students and watching them grow throughout the program as well. So meeting students in the admissions process and coming into for an open day and yeah. seeing an interest in the course to so then support them through their first year and then transitioning into their second year and third year and watching them grow on that journey is something that I'm really, really passionate about and yeah. I really enjoy. And if you had to say one thing, so you had a, a student or a potential student who was thinking, you know, is nursing for me? What should I do? What would be your one bit of advice you would kind of give them? 
I think, go with your gut. We quite often have students that say to us, oh, I know this is a really silly question, and, and that's how they start their question. Oh, this is probably really stupid, or this is a really silly question. But uh, one of my things that I say to them is, no question is a silly question. So yep. go with your gut um, before you make any decisions about anything that you want to do in life, because the Children and Young People's Nursing Programme isn't an easy programme to go on. But make sure you're equipped with the knowledge that you need to have to ensure that the programme is the right programme for you. So ask questions, go with your gut. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's if your gut's saying go for the course, for yeah. you, there's probably some good yeah. reasoning behind that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And you will make a difference to the future lives of children and their families. Yeah. Yeah. You can't think of many more rewarding courses and programmes to go and then professions to go into than, than doing children's nursing. No, yeah. definitely not. Good. Right. Well, thank you very much. I think that's kind of given us a, a snapshot of, of you and what your career is kind of involved and how you've got to this point. Um, so hopefully students have found it interesting. Thank you Brilliant. very much. Thank you for having me, Joe. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. Um, you can subscribe to get alerts and uh, you can add any comments or questions below and we can always get back to you. Um, explore the site. There's um, many more um, Meet the Lecturer episodes available um, to watch if you're on YouTube or listen um, as a podcast as well. Um, so thank you very much and thanks Michaela. Thank you Joe. Cool. Thank you.